if a person is absolutely innocent and they fail to testify, aren't you going to have some question about why that's happening? Are you going to feel like, why is this person who is innocent? And, and let's make it clear. He's innocent. He's really smart. Like my client, he's a CEO. He's educated. If that man is innocent, shouldn't he stand up and say, I'm innocent and face questioning by the prosecutor? Ma'am, you, you were shaking your head. Tell me what you're thinking. I think just that. Why, and, and tell me more about that. Well, um, I, I put myself in, and if someone says that I've done something and I haven't done it, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to at least say, I didn't do that. And if you were an educated person, so you were used to public speaking. Would that play a role in the way you think about it? Yeah. I mean, I'm a telephone service repair woman, um, and I would do it. So I would expect someone who has an education would definitely do it. Sir, could you tell me what you're thinking? If you were innocent and charged with a crime, would you want to get up and testify and tell people that you didn't do it? No. Why not? Because the, the prosecution can ask me a series of questions that can make me appear guilty. And I don't want to have all that over my head. Now, we've just heard this juror give an opinion. I'm wondering if anybody has a different view or the opposite view that this juror has, who says that he might not testify. Anybody feel differently, feeling like, no, if it were me, I would testify. I feel like I have to. I would want that person to testify. I want to look that person in the eyes. I want to see the body posture. Uh, I just want to see the overall demeanor that would help me determine if I believe their story. So let me stop for a minute. Uh, and I don't know if there are any questions or any comments, but uh, one of the things that you can see here is two jurors indicated that they wouldn't testify. And I don't know if it was obvious, but I was running away from them as quickly as I could because I don't want to hear anything that they have to say on the topic. I want to hear what the other jurors, what the other opinions have to say. What she said is that if what we're looking for is people who are going to expect our client to testify, if I ask the gentleman who said, no, I wouldn't testify, if I ask him to explain that, it might be dangerous ground. And I think it's only dangerous ground to the extent that if it may signal to the prosecutor that this is a juror who is not going to hold it against the defendant if he or she testifies. I really don't care about the reasons why he wouldn't testify. I don't want to if I wanted to explore those reasons, it would be because I would then want other jurors to comment. And since, that's we, since what we're trying to do right now is figure out who's going to insist that the defendant testify, his comments may not help me identify other jurors who have that same viewpoint. So in other words, the classic cross is where you ask a question you know the answer to, and the witness is supposed to say yes, right? That's how you've all been taught to cross-examine. This isn't that classic cross. I am trying to provoke a fight here. This is a fight I want to have. So the truth couldn't be that Brendan Dassey was at home at the time Therese Halbach was murdered. Oh, no, of course not. The truth couldn't be he was in his living room playing video games. No. And the truth couldn't be that he went over to Steve Avery's and just saw absolutely nothing in that bonfire. Absolutely not. It wasn't. So you had an opinion, so your purpose was to get a confession. No, well, that's what we found out during our investigation. Well, let me ask about this, okay? You weren't at the scene. Well, no. You don't have a video of what actually happened to Teresa Halbach. Mm, no. You didn't have any physical evidence that Brendan was there. Uh, no, we couldn't find any. Right. There was no DNA, right? Uh, yeah. No right. fingerprints. Yeah. No video recording of him being there. Well, no, you wouldn't expect that. There was no video recording of him being there. No, there wasn't. So you aren't a personal witness, and your investigation, as you like to call it, about him being there really consisted solely of what you were able to get him to tell you. Well, yes, he admitted to being there. I understand that. But nothing leading up to this investigation at this point. You had no evidence that he had been there. Well, um, no. Thank you. All right. <laughs> so this is what you're going to do. So you're going to provoke the fight, and they're going to fight with you about it. They're going to say it's the truth. But you know what? Who cares? 
What you do, okay, so this is Brendan's real story. So Brendan's real story in the real case um, is exactly what we said. I mean, this is what he told the police at first, that he was at home during this time and that he was actually playing video games and he went over to Steve Avery's later and he didn't see anything. In the, he went over for a bonfire and he didn't see anything amiss. So that was his story. So you're going to take your client's story or part of your theory, you're going to trilogize it, turn it into three or multiples of three because that's effective. And you're going to ask the cop and they will always say it couldn't be that because they believe it couldn't be that. And then you, of course, you want to point out, like, they didn't have shit, right? So this is going to vary, uh, but they did, weren't at the scene. They didn't have a video, whether they had physical or evidence or not. That's all going to depend on your theory of the case. So you're going to fill this in with the actual stuff from your theory. So I want uh, to ask you, do you ever testify for the government? I haven't, no. And why is that? I haven't been asked to. <laughs> Perfect answer, right? Okay. Um, I, I, of course, would be happy to if I oh. were asked. Uh, so if you were asked, would you do so? Of course. Okay. Yeah. Um, now, Dr. Are you getting paid for your time today? Yes. And um, how are you being compensated? I uh, am being paid at $250 an hour. And do, do you, are you also getting paid for your, does, is that your testimony time? That's all time um, dedicated in any way to, uh, to this case. And that would include travel time? Yes. Okay. I'm sorry I'm crossing her. I can't are help you? it. Um, and um, would the science be different um, based on how you were compensated? Oh, no. I'm, I am reporting what the scientific findings are, and that doesn't change. And with respect to the scientific findings, um, are you relying on other people's studies? Uh, yes, typically. So how the scientific endeavor works is that each of us in our own individual lab contributes a very small proportion to the larger scientific effort. And we operate as a community you know, standing on each other's shoulders and, um, you know, springboarding from each other's findings. And as a community, we make use of each other's findings. So it, is it fair to say that other um, experts in the field also rely on other experts' uh, studies? Absolutely, yes. And um, is it possible that an eyewitness identification can be accurate? Yeah, of course. And, and can you talk a little bit about um, what that is or how that looks, what that looks like? Uh, sure. What, how I understand your question is, uh, it, is it possible that when a witness makes an identification in any context, a show up or a photo array or a lineup procedure, is it possible that the person they've identified is the actual perpetrator? And of course, the answer to that is yes. Um, would you agree with me that there are some topics that are uh, you know, controversial um, within your scientific community? Sure. And, and, and what kind of things are those? What kind of topics are those? Well, that changes over time. So really what you're describing is how science works. You know, the way that science moves forward is that there are uh, questions that arise. Different people have different predictions or hypotheses or models. Uh, to address whatever that question is. And that sort of you know, spawns the next wave of lively, productive research that science depends on to move forward. 